I'll go ahead and give you just a little bit of information about our presenter today. If you ever have financial concerns related to caregiving, this season of the Virtual Book Club for Dementia Caregivers is for you. Our facilitator is the author of Cruising Through Caregiving, Reducing the Stress of Caring for Your Loved One, and a gerontology instructor at Johns Hopkins University. A regular media contributor, she has been featured on the Fox News, HLN, ABC, and CBS. Please join me in welcoming our facilitator, Jennifer L. Fitzpatrick, MSW CSP. Thank you so much, Charlene. Welcome back. I can't believe it's the 10th session of our book club. We're so happy to have you here. And as Darlene said, if finances have ever been a concern for you in the caregiving process, this session is for you. Now, if you are Mark Zuckerberg or Mark Cuban or one of those Marks and you have plenty of money and you don't need to, to worry about budgets and finances, then so you can skip this session. But if you are like many of us in caregiving, you, you're going to have money and finances on your mind, at taking care of a loved one who has Alzheimer's disease or another type of dementia. And of course, this uh, session actually in much of the book I refer to in Cruising Through Caregiving about what Medicare and Medicaid don't pay for because sadly, so often family caregivers are just shocked by how much is not covered by Medicare or Medicaid or when each are appropriate to try to utilize. And we're going to uncover some of that today. So unless you are really, really, really wealthy, but even if you are really wealthy, you're probably going to get something out of this program today. As always, I want to thank Hilarity for Charity and always the Senior Advisors, our wonderful sponsors. We're very grateful for their support and so delighted that we're able to offer to you this 15-week virtual book club for dementia caregivers. Thank you, Oasis. Thank you, Hilarity for Charity. So I want to run a first poll. So the first poll is, what does Medicare sometimes pay for? So I want you to think about what you think that Medicare sometimes pays for. And I want you to check everything that applies. What do you think Medicare sometimes pays for? There are things on this list that Medicare pays for, but only sometimes. Then there's things on this list that are never paid for by Medicare. So take a moment. Uh, I'm going to ask Darlene to go ahead and share that poll with everybody. Okay, so we're actually in a little bit of trouble with the slide. I'm very sorry about this. Um, we're going to try to pull this slide up. Are we, uh, Darlene, are we able to see the poll? I'm not actually able to see the poll right now. Let's see if we can get that poll to show. Yes, the poll is showing. And oh, great. Okay, great. So, apologies, folks. As you know, what's that? We're seeing the poll. Yes, and we're getting the responses. Oh, great. Okay, everyone's seeing the poll, but your facilitator, so bear with me. Technology is so wonderful when it works, but most of the time it works pretty well. So again, those of you who are joining us after the live recording, just know that you're not able to participate in the poll. So Darlene, when the poll results are available, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and share those with us. Because I can't see them. Okay, great. Well, we have the results in, and it looks like 75% of our responders are rehab care and nursing home and also home health, with the others uh, adult daycare, home care, assisted living at 25%, and long-term nursing home care at 50%. Okay, great. So some of you really know this stuff and some of you, uh, we still need to clarify a few things. Um, Darlene, I just want to ask, are we able to see the slideshow properly now? No, it is showing blank. Oh no, okay. We can All right, I'm going to try one more. Okay, so let's talk, as I try to work this out, I'm going to share with you uh, the poll. 
Um, with the poll, and I'm going to see if I can't do this, some of you are right on target right on target you have, have have it all very um very well figured out that sometimes home health and sometimes short-term rehab in nursing homes are uh, actually darling you know i'm gonna ask can you go ahead and share the uh, the powerpoint and, and bring us if you could if, if when you get a moment i know i'm asking you to do this kind of on the slide but while i go through you could bring us up to slide three if you could. Okay. So, okay. So Medicare, what does Medicare sometimes pay for? So what does Medicare sometimes pay for? So adult day, you're probably never going to see Medicare pay for it. Home care, never. Assisted living and long-term nursing care, no. But sometimes after, say, somebody breaks a hip or they have a stroke, Rehab care often will be paid for by Medicare for rehab care in a nursing home. And then home health, which is different from home care. So we heard a couple of weeks ago from Lakeland Hogan, who, uh, who's with Home Instead, and Home Instead administers the grants from Hilarity for Charity. And home care is you've got somebody that comes in and either helps with bathing, helps with dressing, maybe help with some housekeeping, maybe meal prep. Sometimes even somebody from home care will help out, maybe drive you to a doctor's appointment. That is almost always going to be private pay, whereas home health is often what we call a skilled care. So that's if you, you come out of the hospital and you're in the hospital for a period of time and you need a physical therapist to visit you or you need a nurse to come out to the home. So it's more skilled care. So sometimes home health and rehab care are paid for by Medicare, but they're the only ones in this poll. So uh, uh, just wondering if we were possibly able to get the uh, the screen share up. Oh, look at that. Isn't that great? We are so fortunate to have backup plans. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So, uh, so great. So we're going to move on to the next slide. Overall, care costs money. Care costs money. And it's going to be more than you think most of the time. It's when we had Mary Beth Versani last last session from Argentum, the nation, the U.S. Uh, Association for Senior Living Communities Assisted Living. She talked a lot. We both talked a lot about the concept that many people believe Medicare or Medicaid will pay for assisted living, and it usually doesn't. So there's a lot that we we are going to have to pay out of pocket. Whether it's our loved ones' money, maybe they have a pension, maybe they have assets, maybe we in the family and friend network are pitching in to pay for some services, but a lot of care is out of pocket. We're gonna to go to the next slide, Darlene. So Medicare.gov, now I have to tell you, Medicare.gov, if you want details on what Medicare does and doesn't pay for, this is where you wanna go. Now it is actually quite user-friendly. So I, most of us are gonna have no trouble understanding the Medicare website and they have a number that you can call, but I'm not gonna get into all the specifics because there's, there's different types of Medicare and everybody's plan is different. So if you're, look, if you're a caregiver for someone who has dementia, you wanna look at your plan in medicare.gov. But more than that, we're gonna move to the next slide. More than that, beyond going to the medicare.gov website, we are going to recommend that you go, uh, very good, uh, to the SHIP Center in your area. So SHIP, S-H-I-P-T-A center.org is actually a wonderful service, 877-839-2675. Uh, and this is a free service where you can sit down with somebody, typically in a senior center, it's uh, either a paid person or a volunteer person who's going to sit down with you and go through your plan, or if you're trying to change Medicare plans or figure out what Medicare will pay for you, they are a service that's completely free, and they can help you with any Medicare questions. And You can set up an appointment in person. Most local senior centers have a SHIP counselor or somewhere else in your city or county, but also you can call that 877 number. 
So if you want specifics about what you're eligible for, when Medicare will cover something, again, uh, most of the time it's not going to be assisted living, not going to be home care aid, not going to be adult day, but SHIP is where you want to go. So I want to make sure everybody feels really empowered after this session. We're not going to get into explicit specifics about Medicare, but this is where you go and it's a wonderful, wonderful service. So SHIP, SHIPTACenter.org. So we're going to move to the next slide now. Medicaid, on the other hand, interestingly, the United States Supreme Court has called Medicaid laws, quote, an aggravated assault on the English language, resistant to attempts to understand it. And my colleague, Evan Farr of the Farr Law Firm, he's an elder law attorney out of Virginia, quoted in Cruising Through Caregiving, loves to quote this. He quotes it on his website. And I know a lot of elder law attorneys quote this because Medicaid is really hard to understand. It's really, really complicated. And unfortunately, they don't have these centers like SHIP that you can go to for Medicaid. Medicaid is complicated, but the fact is that men, Many times, many people, middle class, upper class, even if you've never been on Medicaid in your life before, even if you'd never previously been impoverished, if your loved one has Alzheimer's or another type of dementia, it's quite possible that you might need the assistance of Medicaid at some point. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today and what that means for you. So we're going to move to the next slide. So this poll is, what does Medicaid sometimes pay for? And please keep in mind that Medicaid is also known as medical assistance. That's another term for Medicaid. So I want you to check as many that uh, apply. So what do you think Medicaid sometimes pays for? So just so you know, Darlene, I am not seeing the poll, so just keep me, uh, Keep me posted. We got those results. What does Medicaid or medical assistance sometimes pay for? Okay, we're showing 60% saying adult daycare, 40% at home care, 80% at the rehab care and nursing home, 40% home health, and 80% assisted living as well as long-term nursing home care. Okay, so. So there's the 80% at okay. rehab care, assisted living and long-term. Okay, so adult day, yes. In many states, if your loved one qualifies for Medicaid, it'll pay for adult day. And I'm a big fan of adult day. Adult day to me is, I think I've said this in book club, it's one of the best bargains out there. It's, it's a day, if you have to pay privately, I believe the average rate is somewhere around 70, 80 something, depending on what state you're in. I think it might go up to 100 a day. But it's, it's meals, it's activities, some have medical oversight. But yeah, if you qualify for Medicaid or medical assistance in many states, it will pay. Rehab care and nursing home, no, that's Medicare. Assisted living, typically no. Very rarely will it, will it uh, pay for assisted living. Home care, there are instances, incredibly rare, Home health, it has happened, but more often it's Medicaid. But long-term nursing home care is, is, in fact, Medicaid is a huge payer of long-term nursing home care. So if your loved one ever needs nursing home care, eventually they probably will be a recipient of Medicaid. So we're going to keep in mind that most of the time, the two that are, can we go back for one moment? Just please keep in mind for most of the time, home care, which is an aid coming into your home, like Home Instead, who administers the Hilarity for Charity grant. If you're not a Hilarity for Charity grant recipient, you have to pay privately for that. Home care is typically paid privately. Assisted living is typically paid privately. But the rest of them, in many cases, will be provided by Medicaid in, and Medicare in some instances. So 
Let's look at a case study and see what everybody thinks. Next slides, please. Okay, so this is another poll. You're married. You own a home worth about $400,000. And you also have other assets. Perhaps you have a pension. Perhaps you have stocks and mutual funds. Your spouse has just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And you want to plan financially for the future. Who is the best person for you to talk to today? So I want everybody to think about it. Who would you talk to? Just pick one. Who would you talk to today to help plan best financially? So, Darlene, do we have that poll yet? Oh, I got some people responding to me privately. Uh, is, is the poll up, Darlene? No, this one was not included. So they'll be responding to you. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. This is not a poll. So a couple people writing in. Yep, I got a couple people writing in. Elder law attorney. Excellent. That's exactly who you want to talk to. You want to talk to an elder law attorney. There's nothing wrong with talking to a Medicaid administrator. There's nothing wrong with finding out what's going on with your pension. An aging life care manager can be a tremendous resource, but the person you want here is an elder law attorney. So we're going to speak a little bit about why this person can help you. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So finding an elder law attorney, here are three websites that I like. So the first one is the National um, Academy on Elder Law Attorneys. Now, uh, the Elder Law Answers and the LCPLFA, uh, Life Care uh, Law Firm Planning Association. So this group is wonderful in particular because one of the things that the life care planning lawyers do is they actually typically have a nurse or a social worker on staff that actually helps to assess you and your family and find out what you need more than financial and elder law planning. So what an elder law attorney is going to be able to help you do is plan in case you ever do need medical assistance. Because if you call Medicaid or if you drop by their office or if you can simply fill out a Medicaid application and you tell them, we have a home that's worth $400,000, but I, I don't know what to do if, if my loved one needs. What often you're going to hear is that you need to sell the home, you need to, when, when you're out of assets, then come see us. And, or, or they might not say sell your home, but they might say, well, when you have zero assets, that's when you can apply for medical assistance. And really what a Medicaid, what a what Medicaid planning is, and it's legal, it's ethical, and certified elder law attorneys, in my opinion, are the best people to help you do this. What you want to talk to that person about is protecting the assets of the spouse. So if you're the spouse, the Medicaid does not expect you to sell your house. You're allowed to keep a car, a vehicle. You're allowed to have a certain amount of money to live on. But you also can, so you can protect a certain amount of assets and not have to spend all of that on uh, care for your loved one. You may be able to get Medicaid sooner. I'm not going to get into great deal about that any more than, than what I just said, because this really is a consultation that you want to have with an elder law attorney who does this for a living. But it's legal, it's ethical, and in most states, they can actually help you figure out how to utilize your loved one's assets as long as possible to enhance their quality of life. So for example, they might help you figure out a budget. So I'm going to utilize X amount of my mom's money, even if it's not a spousal situation, I'm going to utilize X amount of my mom's money and place her in assisted living, or we're going to pay for a home care aid. And then when we reach a certain point, um, then we're going to apply for medical assistance. So it's really about knowing how much of your loved one is allowed to gift 
So there are special rules in place if they want to give money to grandchildren over years. And this is also important to know if for you yourself, for all of us actually, if and when we ever think we might need medical assistance. And a great many people, even if you've earned a living, a great living, maybe you have plenty of assets, even people who have been millionaires, if they live long enough with Alzheimer's disease or another type of dementia, they might need Medicaid at some point. So the goal of working with an elder law attorney is to figure out how to be strategic about it. And if you have a spouse in the community, how to protect assets, how to spend your assets so you're not going to be penalized by medical assistance when you do make the application. And I'm not going to get into too much detail, only to say that if you have any assets that you seriously want to consider having a conversation with an elder law attorney. Most elder law attorneys will at least have a 15-minute consultation with you, and you can talk through, here's what's going on with me. Am I a good candidate to come and actually make an appointment with you? Feel free to write in at any point if you want to ask a question or make a comment as usual. So Darlene, if we can move to the next slide. Now we're at the point where we're going to say hello and thank you again. Uh, if you can click uh, Darlene to Oasis Senior Advisors and Hilarity for Charity, oasisseniordvisors.com, hilarityforcharity.org. And we're going to move aside and ask Tim Ivankovich, CEO of Oasis Senior Advisors, to say hi to us. And if you'd like to weigh in on this topic at all, we'd love to hear his opinion and perspective, or if he just wants to tell us what's new in the world of Oasis Senior Advisors. Well, thank you, Jen, as always. Great to, <clears throat> great to be here again today, and obviously to support uh, not just the book club, but uh, also uh, your work and, and Hilarity for Charity as well. We love that partnership and, uh, and see great things from it as well. And, and yeah, you know, as advisors, of what, you know, basically what we do is help with assisted living and finding the right place and that perfect place. But one of the things that we also do is give great direction to families when they're looking for elder law attorneys or, or those counselors that they need for Medicaid, Medicare. Uh, a lot of our franchise owners, you know, have a litany of associates that they, they work with and have good relationships with to help direct those families. We feel that's what we do as part of our, our work with our families is give that direction when they don't know where to turn. What does Medicaid cover? What doesn't it cover? Uh, in, in all of those instances. So yeah, we work very closely uh, all around the country with our uh, over 80 franchisees. Each of them have elder law attorneys that they work with, in-home care companies that they work with. Anybody that that family may need, we've got great relationships with those folks to make sure we're directing them in the right direction. And it's really wonderful that you're able to make those referrals because so many families are just surprised when they hear, well, when they're looking at assisted living that it's not going to be covered by Medicaid, it's not going to be covered by Medicare, and it's wonderful that they have you, Oasis Senior Advisors, as a free service that can point them in the right direction, and if and when they are ready for assisted living, senior living, you're there, but in the meantime, if they want to talk to other professionals, you have a database of of people that can help them out. So that's that's an awesome service. And again, it, Oasis Senior Advisors is completely free, over 80 franchises, oasisseniorvisors.com. Yeah, and hey, you make a good point, Jen, that uh, you know a lot of the Medicaid, Medicare, of course, we're not getting compensated for, but our franchisees believe that we're still gonna help those families because one, they need the direction, they need the help, and two, even more so, it's just the right thing to do. So, uh, you know, we need to give them the direction they need as well. Uh, you know, it, it's not for us always about the money. It's about making sure we're, uh, we're helping that family in whatever capacity we, we can. And that's another good reason to just pick up the phone. If you're in an area where there's an Oasis Senior Advisors, just give them a call and say, here's what I'm looking for. And if they're able to help you, and if, if for some reason it's not something that they can help you with, I'm sure they'll tell you. But it sounds like, even if you're not exactly ready for senior living, if you're looking for something else, they can probably point you in the right direction. That's exactly correct. We, uh, we're here to help, and, and our service, again, is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a, a penny, so that's what we love to do. OasisSeniorAdvisors.com. Thanks so much, Tim, for being part of the book club and, and sponsoring it. We really appreciate you. Pleasure, Jen. Love being here. So now we want to go ahead and welcome RJ Mercedes from Hilarity for Charity. And RJ is the director of 
Oops, sorry, RJ. Uh, you know what, just leave it right there. Uh, the, that one, darling, that's great. Uh, I just, uh, we're, we're not gonna have a slide, sadly. RJ, if you would share mm -hmm. your screen with us, that would be great. Hi there. Thank you everybody for bearing with our technical issues today. Hey, RJ, welcome. Happy to be here. Any, uh, anything you wanna share with us today? Any thoughts about what we're talking about, about Medicare and Medicaid and what it doesn't pay for? Yeah, I mean, it, we receive hundreds of applications every month from families that are affected by this disease and looking for some kind of help. And we have kind of run the gamut from folks that are receiving assistance um, to folks that are not. So we're kind of here to support you in whatever capacity we can, whether it's providing that, that grant, providing opportunities like this to create some community and other educational experiences. Um, but we're just we're here to help um, families as much as we can today because we know how uh, important care is right now um, even though we are still invested in uh, a cure one day it, the one of the wonderful things one of the most wonderful things about hilarity for charity is that you're a gap filler so while you can't fund every family when families face the daunting reality of how how much Medicaid and Medicare don't cover. It, there right. are, there's you and a lot of families, it's just a blessing. And you know, the, the grants are terrific. The formats of the grant for respite and, and providing that relief uh, can really help while you're figuring out what do you, what, how do you pay for things? How do you budget? So we're going to talk a little bit about budget, but um, if you want to apply for the Hilarity for Charity grant, please go to hilarityforcharity.org and uh, send an application, tell your story, and also hashtag many faces of Alzheimer's. Uh, they are always collecting stories about caregivers who are taking care of their loved ones. So thank you so much for sponsoring the Virtual Book Club for Dementia Caregivers, RJ, and thanks for everything Hilarity for Charity is doing. Well, thank you, thank you, Tim, um, and we're, we're here to help, so reach out. Hilarityforcharity.org, again, reach out. Both of these organizations are free, to ask for help. Uh, Hilarity for Charity does rolling grant applications every month in OasisSeniorAdvisors.com. Just look and see in your geographic area if there's a franchise that might be able to help you. So thanks so much, sponsors. So we're gonna move to the next slide, Darlene. So where else can you get help? So we're talking about the Medicare and Medicare are there. They provide some help for some things. We've got grants like Hilarity for Charity, which are wonderful, but now we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what else, where else can, can you get help? So uh, if you would click, Darlene, we're going to get a couple coming up. So the Area Agency on Aging. So we talked a couple moments ago about, moments ago about SHIP. So SHIP, T-A, uh, and you can go to the SHIP counselor, and mostly they're at the senior centers, which are typically administered by your Area Agency on Aging n4a.org if you go to that website and you plug in your zip code it'll generate a list of the area agencies on aging in your area there's an area agency on aging in every city county or cluster of clusters of counties in the united states it's a federal mandate in 60, 1965 we started uh made a law that we have to have area agencies on aging and it's i'm not saying that they're going to solve all your problems i'm not saying that they have everything that you need but they help with the, they have the congregate meal program where you and your loved one could go and have a low cost or even a free meal at lunchtime. They can hook you up with your local Meals on Wheels program. And typically that's a sliding scale. They have uh, senior centers or what's called Senior Center Plus. It's not quite an adult day, but it's, it's more socialization for somebody uh, that might be early stages of dementia. Area agencies on aging also often focus on serving persons with dementia by having memory cafes, which are programs for people in the early stages of dementia who want to be around others that have recently been diagnosed and that are dealing with a new diagnosis. There's all, transportation programs. If you're, you're getting, having challenges getting your loved one where he or she needs to go, maybe you don't drive and you need transportation. Make a friend at your local area agency on aging. I'm not saying that they can fix everything, but they do sometimes have grants that are, are pretty wonderful. Sometimes they have programs that are free or very low cost. So, um, and, but, but know that even if you have a good budget, 
you still might find some services there that can help you on your caregiving journey or voyage, as I call it, and cruising through caregiving. So reach out to your local area agency on aging. The next one is nonprofits and other resources that are free to the caregiver. And we just talked about Hilarity for Charity. Obviously, that's a great one. Alzheimer's Association, ALZ.org. We're going to have Tiffany Favors from the Alzheimer's Association on our program live next week on the July 31st program. But there are the Louis Body Dementia Association, the Frontal Temporal Dementia Association. Make a friend, whatever dementia your loved one has, get to know that nonprofit. Often they have respite, they have grants, they have programs that can really uh, take the burden off of you. And again, I'm not saying that every nonprofit is going to give you tons of money or anything like that, but there might be grants. There might They might know of other programs that can reduce the financial burden for you. So if the one thing I say, ne- caregiving is never easy. Caregiving is no vacation. If you want, you can cruise more smoothly through it if you make an effort. But listen, if you have a huge budget, is caregiving going to be a little bit less stressful? Probably, because you're going to have a lot of options. But If you're on a smaller budget, you just have to be a little bit creative and reach out to these organizations. And, you know, we talked about the caregiving crew during the course of the book club. Get one of your secondary caregivers to make the calls. Get one of your tertiary caregivers to research what the nonprofits in your area have available for you. So don't uh, underestimate that there is help for you. I'm not saying that every one of these groups has a huge check for you, but there, there's a lot out there if you look for it and get, utilize your caregiving crew. This is something maybe you don't personally have to do or have time to do. This is something you could put a grandkid on. It has, it wants to, you know, it's always online anyway. So um, next one, Darlene. Others in your caregiving crew with budgetary issues, please keep in mind that it's okay to accept money from others in the caregiving crew. There might be people in your caregiving crew, friends, family, neighbors, people from your faith-based community who they can't give you time. They're not going to come and stay with mom while you go get your nails done, or they're not going to go, they're not going to take your dad to the doctor, but they might say, you know what, let me bring, let me, let me spend, give you some money toward takeout meals. Let me give you some money toward uh, something that you can, you know, a home care aid for a day. People that live far away, if they have money, they might be willing. And this is, again, if you're in a place where you could use financial assistance, don't be shy. That it, it, a lot of people want to help. And I'm not saying everyone you know can afford, and there may be many people in your family and friend network that they can't afford it. But a lot of pe- people want to do something. Be open if they share, if they want to share with you. The last one on this slide is veterans' benefits. Aid and attendance. If your loved one is a veteran, the person that has dementia, or their spouse is a veteran, talk to the VA. There are benefits that can help defray the cost of senior living, for example. So look into veterans' benefits. I'm not going to get too much into tax credits, but there are tax credits for caregiving. And I'm not an accountant, I'm not an attorney, but this is something you could also talk about with your elder law attorney, that there might be tax credits that you as the caregiver may be able to take. So again, states vary, talk to your CPA, talk to your accountant and your elder law attorney. One other last area that I wanted to mention, when you're doing your Medicaid planning, your Medicaid spend down, please keep in mind that in many states, there are legal ways that your loved one can pay you to take care of him or her. Now, let's say it's your aunt or it's your grandmother or it's your mom or your sister. If you, they can't pay you $100,000 a year, but they can pay you the going rate that a home care aide could make. And that, if that's done properly through an elder law attorney agreement, that won't get counted against you for Medicaid planning. Again, an elder law attorney will be able to explain that much better to you, but that might be a way, like say you've quit your job and you want, you want to take care of your mom or your grandmom, you might be able to get some money from them, uh, that, that, that won't be counted again. So maybe they would pay you rather than the home care agency. So these are just some other ways, some creative ways to look into where else you can get help. 
Next slide, please. Kevin Farr I talked about, he is a certified elder law attorney. He is out of the DC area in Northern Virginia, farrlawfirm.com. He's quoted extensively in cruising through caregiving. And he's um, one of my uh, favorite elder law attorneys. He's actually consistently since 2007 been voted a super lawyer, which is actually a thing, superlawyers.com. They categorize attorneys in the United States every year. So he's consistently been voted super a super lawyer in the top 5% of super lawyers since 07. And he's somebody I respect quite a bit. And he says, in cruising through caregiving, why not pay a little bit now to save in the long run? Utilize your elder law attorneys, or at least call them, get a consult and if, if you don't think it's right for you, Evan says, if you have 50 grand, 50,000 in assets, whether it's a home, whether it's stock, whether it's that it, you, you're probably going to benefit from utilizing an elder law attorney. And actually, even if you don't have that much in assets, a lot of uh, families will even just pay an elder law attorney to walk them through the Medicaid application process. Because I'll tell you what, all the years that I've been in this field, I wouldn't do my own Medicaid application for a loved one. It's complicated. There's a lot of financial information, documents, things that you don't want to forget. I personally have to tell you, I'd hire somebody to help me through that process because it's just not my area of expertise. So that, that says something uh, because there's a lot that I probably could do for a loved one. But if I needed to fill out a Medicaid application, I probably would work with a trusted elder law attorney. Not to be an elder law attorney, keep in mind you don't have to be a CELA, C E L A. That means that you are certified as an elder law attorney. That's another layer of expertise, another exam. There are firms that are considered elder law attorneys, they are estate planning attorneys. Um, I personally really, really like that CELA designation. It tells you that they have that extra bit of education, but that said, if they've got lots and lots of experience working with older adults, ask about their experience with Medicaid planning, estate planning. Those are some of the questions in order to find. But those websites I gave earlier, another good one is Naela, N-A-E-L-A.org. That's N-A-E-L-A.org. But on the slide previous, we had a couple of websites that could help you find elder law attorneys. So, so Evan says, and, it, and I think this goes for not just elder law attorneys, but care managers home care aids, something that's going to save you time or energy. And sometimes when you spend a little bit of money now, it'll save you in the long run. So quote from Evan Farsila. So feel free to write in with any comments and questions if you have any, uh, if those of you who are joining us live. A couple last thoughts. Be mindful of your budget. If you are helping supplement your loved one's care with your own money. It's not you and your spouse, it's, it's your sister, it's your uncle, it's your grandmother. Be careful. If you spend too much money on your loved one's care, this has a spinoff effect. This impacts your kids, it impacts your nieces and nephews, it impacts your grandkids. Be mindful of how much money you can truly afford to put toward your, your loved one's care. It's, it's hard. It, if you don't have unlimited funds, which many of us do not, it's funny in cruising through caregiving, I say, if you have unlimited funds, you can skip this chapter and most people can't skip this chapter, but just be mindful of your budget. And you're, you know, you're already giving your time. You're already giving your energy to your loved one. You don't have to give all of your assets. I will tell you that when my grandma became sick, uh, when we started looking at services that we needed for her. I remember my dad who was retired at the time, he wanted to cash in a lot of his assets. And I said to my dad, please don't do that. Uh, we all as a family chipped in, pitched in together. I said, it's not your responsibility only. And, and selfishly, I'm going to be really transparent. I said, dad, you know, if you get older and you need help, then my sister and brother and I are going to have to pay for it. And we, you know, I said, please, you know, we will, we'll stay within a certain budget. Everyone in the family came together, said what they could afford. And, you know, some people could afford more, some people could afford less. And my grandmother had a certain amount of money. So just be mindful and don't be ashamed to say, Hey, this is my limit on what I can contribute to care. Next slide, please. 
So I want to say thank you again to our sponsors, Hilarity for Charity, hilarityforcharity.org, and Oasis Senior Advisors, oasisseniordvisors.com. There is a lot of great information coming at you next week. Next week, we're going to be speaking to Tiffany Favors, our clinical lead from the National Office of the Alzheimer's Association out in Chicago. And she's going to be talking about all the services that the Alzheimer's Association can help you with because there are a lot and most of them are free or low cost. And this can continue our conversation about how to stretch your budget further. Thank you all so much. I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. And if you're listening to us uh, after uh, July 24th, uh, feel free to write in anytime with your comments or questions, Jen at generationshealth.com. Don't forget, if you have stories of caregiving that you want to share with Hilarity for Charity, uh, the, the, use the hashtag many faces of Alzheimer's or reach out to hilarityforcharity.org directly. And hilarityforcharity.org if you would like to apply for the grant program, oasisseniordvisors.com. If you want to talk about the free help for referrals and help in finding senior living for your loved one if it comes to the time where you're ready to go ahead and do that, both free to you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the virtual book club for dementia caregivers. Great, thank you. I will leave this open a little bit longer for anybody who might have any last minute questions. Otherwise, uh, you will receive a copy of this recording in your email, so be on the lookout for that. And we will see you again next week. That will be July 31st, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here. Have a wonderful rest of the week and a fabulous day.